Hi everyone and welcome to the Game Breakdown Podcast, the podcast where we break down lots of different games and in this case showcases because oh my god how many showcases has there been in the past few weeks? Not very many that are worth mentioning if I'm honest. No, no, not that are worth mentioning but oh my god so we've had over the past couple of weeks what have we had? We've had Nintendo Direct. Yeah we had the big Nintendo Direct, we've had State of Play. State of Play. We had the Resident Evil Showcase. We did. We had the Resident Evil Showcase. Um, Pokemon Day and the Pokemon Showcase. God, there's actually been loads. There's been loads. Put it like, like that. Yeah. When, yeah. I, when I put when I lay all the facts out. When you lay when you lay it on the table, that is a few. But like, I'm gonna be honest and say that it doesn't really feel like anything's happened. No, it doesn't feel like anything's happened. Mm-hmm. Was you gonna say something? <laughs> no, I was just like thinking about it, thinking what actually happened. Like, lots nothing. has been going on. Nothing, nothing. Lots have happened, but nothing has happened. Yeah, where do you want to start then? All right, so this podcast, we're going to talk about these showcases, and I think maybe we should talk of them as maybe more of like a whole, but we're going to base it off mostly like state of play, obviously, because that's most recent. But we've got some issues. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like okay, state of play. Let's just let's just get started with state of play because there is a lot going on there. Because yeah. I was quite excited for state of play because you know whenever Sony does a conference, it's always good. But this one was just, and I hate it because they've all the so the showcases so far have been a bit of a bummer. Apart from the Resident Evil one, they've all been a bit of a downer. Mm. And like this one isn't really any different. Like there's a few things that have been better, but still. Okay, let's go through some of them. So the first thing they announced was the um, Crash Bandicoot 4 About Time DLC and like some other things going on there and like how yeah. they're going to be improving that. How did you feel about that? What was your initial reaction? Okay. You know, it was like, cool. Like, people were enjoying Crash. Like, he's come back to this mm-hmm. generation now and like he's living his life. But again, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like these kind of shows should be for things that are quite big. And mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like the enhancements and stuff was kind of really needed to have a place, you know? I think that was the main thing with this one. It was like, there's a lot of things I think, well, could, did that really need a show, you know? Yeah. That was kind the- of my thought process with that. I love Crash, don't get me wrong, but I'm I'm not that into it anymore, really, as, my, as much as I used to be, you know? But this is the problem I found with a lot of the showcases is that it was all about really minor things and they saved the big thing until the very end so you almost had to sit through this stuff until you got to the exciting bit so Mm. the crash thing was like okay exciting but did that need to be on the big screen it's a little bit like the animal crossing thing for the nintendo direct about mario skins coming to nintendo animal crossing yes like that that was a really like an irrelevant thing it's like okay you're making some slight improvements that's really cool like fantastic like, I don't know. It was, it's exciting. I do like Crash, but just thought not really exciting enough, to be honest with you. But mm. hey ho. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went on to Returnal. Now, I am really, I could not give less of a shit about this game. Could you? No. And I'm really sorry <laughs> to, like, you know, the developers and everything. Um, I'm just not sold on it at all. No. Like, it's just kind of missing the mark a little bit for me. Um, I'm not really sure what it is. I mean, okay, so, like, for a start, I think the choice of main character was what kind of caught my eye in the beginning because you play as, like, an older woman, which was quite cool. I was like, okay, like, all right. And I was kind of expecting almost, like, a Mass Effect-style game where you follow this woman and maybe it's a bit more of, like, an RPG and stuff. But it turns out that it's just sort of, like, a fast-paced shooter that's kind of trying to be, like, an arcade-style shooter. But it all looks a bit samey and a bit dark, and I'm, yeah, that's... I'm not here for it, really. No, that's kind of my thing. The choice of character was um, interesting, to say the least. It caught my eye, but possibly not for the right reason. It wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, that looks exciting. I was like, oh, that's an unusual choice of character. And then when I saw the gameplay, exactly the same thing. It reminded me of Mass Effect. Now, I've not played very much Mass Effect, but it looked exactly the same. Kind of third person, fast paced action shooter with kind of RPG elements to it. Um, to me, it just looks like, a third person dead space mm. dead space you know is I mean. third person <laughs> really yeah dead space is third person is it? yeah but Wait. that just yeah <laughs> okay then it looks like dead space <laughs> like, <laughs> i thought dead Funny. space was first person what am i confusing it with 
you're definitely i think you're confusing it with um i don't know but yeah basically <laughs> it's okay it looks generic let's put it that way all right but but i don't yeah, know why do you know what it also kind of reminded me of a bit of like final fantasy spirits within where they have like the enemies that are all kind of like weird colors and i don't know maybe we're just being harsh because it's not the kind of game that we would play but you know i always put sony you know in a league of its own when it came to its single player experiences and mm-hmm. i just feel like returnal is kind of not hitting the mark there but it is a game at the end of the day it's not just dlc that we're being shown so i give it points for that but yeah i hope Returnal yeah. ends up being a really good fun game but i've got a feeling it's going to be one of those ones that it's going to drop in price very quickly and you're going to be able yeah. to pick it up within like three weeks you know so this will be a free game price. on ps plus very soon yeah like, that's kind of what i'm getting from it yeah it's not and also i don't mean to be harsh but the name returnal i don't like that i don't it doesn't it doesn't tell me anything about the game it sounds very strange it reminds me of like the remember all thing that Neville Longbottom had in Harry Potter. The little remember all used to remind him to do his homework. It's like, so the true, name though. Returnal is just, what is that? I don't, it's I mean, weird. Well, I, I said to you, like, and this isn't like safe for work, but like Returnal, just for some reason, when I look at it, I just read Rectum and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but Returnal is just a weird name. It's like Eternal and then Return. So you're returning to an eternal something. And I don't know, it's, it's lost I on don't... me. I don't even want to think that much about it. I can't even. Just Returnal. It's just all I heard is Return with an all at the end. And I'm not here for it. I know, I'm really so... sorry. We're just bad people. I... We're going to hell. We are, um, but... Okay. Next. Next. Um, okay, the next thing they did was um, Sifu. Um, mm-hmm. The Kung Fu experience. Now, this was really bizarre because um, I didn't quite understand the trailer. It was like it was interesting to watch. Like It was kind of like a Kung Fu style... like. Um, reminded me a bit of like Shenmue kind of stuff and what mm-hmm. have you and like all those kind of interesting kung fu games that we've got but it was it was really weird because he was fighting and then he was knocked out and then he grew a beard and got back up and started <laughs> fighting again and I didn't know what was happening whatsoever and I was watching this as part of a stream and I put and like literally the entire chat went like why is he growing a beard what's going on is he in the future no it's the same scene I'm really confused it didn't make any sense to me yeah. um the gameplay yeah. looked fun though it looked it looked like a fun game yeah, it looked like a fun game, but again, it, it still wasn't quite anything to write home about in regards no. to like seeing things. Like it didn't take me back. Like there was quite a build up to it. It was like you know this like this now this kind of game blah blah, blah. like as if it's something totally new, but like it just yeah. wasn't. So yeah, kind of. It gave me like yeah. um, true crime vibes. Do you remember Streets of LA? Oh, true crime Streets of LA. Oh my god, what a game! And yeah, I used to be obsessed what a game. with that. Well, an and your brother game. used to run the karate dojo. Was it karate or yes. judo dojo Yes, and you could play Snoop Dogg as well and like get yes. little rides and shit. <laughs> oh, okay. they, they need to be remade. True kind. That needs a remade. remake. Those were like GTA ripoffs, but I kind they of were. missed them. And they were so <laughs> basic. Like they were actually pretty basic, but so good. I remember you could like just kind of randomly beat people up. I know you can do that anyway, but there was there was just something about it. I think you could like steal money from people. So there was, there was some kind of mechanic in it that I remember was really cool. It's because you um, were like a policeman, weren't you? You had to yeah. like abide by the law, and it was a bit like, mm, this is what I used to. It, yeah, it had that kind of like moral choice to it, which was really cool. Yeah, but sadly, that's not what this was. <laughs> this, well, this, well, we, <laughs> but we, do, we don't know what this really is. Because to be honest with you, it didn't really tell me much. Like when I watched it, I didn't quite get what was going on, and I didn't quite get the whole story of what I was meant to be excited for. Do you know what I mean? It looked like just a generic kind of fighter you know if it was back in the 90s i called it a side scroll it's not like it was just kind of kind of, kind of, yeah. kind of like a beat em up I'm trying and that to was think. it was this game mentioned in the original you know the big state of play we had that we all absolutely lost our shit over before the ps5 was released because i don't remember it in that and there's a lot of titles in remember. this that i remember coming up so i always get confused because i sort of felt like we were jumping to things we expected and then i don't really remember much on this this was kind of a bit no i don't remember a lot about this i remember yeah. Um, which we'll get to. I remember Deathloop being mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I remember Oddworld being mentioned or something about Oddworld. Um, I remember this, the next game we're going to talk about, which is this dodgeball game. I remember that being mentioned and bits, but I don't remember anything about this. Sifu, Sifu, Saifu, I don't know how to say it. Um, mm. But yeah, an intense Kung Fu experience. I don't know how to, I don't, don't remember that. I just but... keep thinking of that. What is it? Ragdoll Kung Fu on the PS3. Oh Ragdoll my Kung God. Fu. And the Fist of Plastic. Fu. 
That was a bit... <laughs> That game was so stupid, but I miss it so much. That was brilliant. Yeah, so good though, so fun. Maybe that's we will what... love it. Okay. But you know what? That's what the, was different about the PS3 is all the games were just so random and experimental, but you enjoyed them. But now they're too serious. I think there's not enough like silliness. Yeah, there isn't enough silliness. Maybe, maybe to be honest though, maybe we are totally going to be wrong about Returnal. Maybe it will be something just er experimental and we might end up loving it, so we'll we'll see. But, um, yeah, Sifu, Saifu, (laughs) Seafood, I'm not sure. (laughs) Whatever it is, we're not sure. (laughs) Um, But we're excited to see what you bring. Because it does look Mm. interesting, I just don't feel like I know enough about it to make a judgement, if you know what I mean. That's the difficult thing, isn't it? Like, maybe that's because, maybe that's it. Like, there's too much secrecy and we don't know what we're getting. And when they try and show something to make it out like it's this big thing, because we're drip fed all the time. Yeah. You know, it's always a bit like, okay, why are you showing me this and saying that it's the best thing? Like, I know nothing about it. This is the first time I've heard it. Like, I'm just not that bothered. Whereas back in the day, you knew what was going on. So you could kind of ride the hype till release you know now it's like yeah you know nothing and then i mean this is a broader thing actually like think it's the same situation with like cyberpunk like we knew kind of various different things but we didn't really know what was going on with what and then that ended up being like the biggest waste of money for a lot of people and i think yeah. that's the issue with these state of plays it's like you have to wait for this thing and it's always underwhelming because we don't know nothing else and then, you know, you either buy it and it's a letdown or what, I don't know. Like, the whole dynamic of the industry at the moment, I'm not a big fan of, but... Yeah, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. It's bizarre. and It doesn't really lend itself to people who are looking for something new and exciting because it just gives you... And usually just giving someone a taste is usually the right thing to do, but it gives you so little of a taste that you actually... You're not intrigued enough to find out more. You're like, okay, well, it looks like a basic beat em up. Like, that's if it could be like a really sick game and have like a really interesting loads of mechanics and like new stuff and blah, 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 blah. But at the minute, that little taster didn't really do anything for me. No. So, there you go. Another one bites um, the dust. <laughs> another one bites the dust, literally. This next one, though, this one, I, I don't, I don't quite, I just don't, I just can't. And it's called Knockout City, the Dodge Brawl capital of the world. And let me just say that again, the Dodge Brawl, B-R-A-W. Play on words. Play on words. Ha ha. Ha ha. It's just, I don't know if I, if anyone asked for a Dodge Brawl game. <laughs> no one asked for a Dodge Brawl game. I, I think, just... do you know what? Okay, maybe I'm getting right. There was this game that came out on like PS2 and I think it was it was called like Free vs Free or something. It was some kind of weird street basketball game that all you mm. did was play against another team of three, but it was all like against the computer and playing basketball. And like as a kid, like I kind of really enjoyed that and I'm getting that kind of vibe from it. Like I know this is like more of like a big kind of playing field for different people, but it almost feels really similar like I don't know. It's a really kind of simple game with like crazy art style. And can I tell you what it, it reminded me of? I don't know if you've ever um, played this Jet Set Radio. Have you ever seen? Mm, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 That... No. Yeah. It does. Yes. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what it is. It's like a Jet Set Radio style looking. Yeah. Game, isn't very it? much like, um, not quite of like an anime drawing, but like kind of anime kind of um simplistic but detailed drawings you know when like everything is oversimplified if you know what i mean to make it look kind of edgy and cool Mm -hmm. it it reminded me of that and it was it was interesting but i don't also let's talk about the trailer so nintendo direct are also um also featured this game right but the trailer was the most bizarre thing i've ever seen in my entire life it was like lots of other game famous game characters talking about how they were enjoying this game. They were, like, reviewing the game in this, like, green screen area. A little bit yeah. like the old World of Warcraft adverts where, like, an orc would sit and discuss yeah. the trials and tribulations <laughs> of his life. Like, it was it was very, like, um, interviewing these real game characters, and it was so bizarre. And it didn't make any sense because none of the real, shall we say, game characters they chose to talk about it made any sense of what the actual game is. And it was just like, oh he's beating me oh i've got to fight back i'm gonna throw the ball blah 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 and then this state of play was i will say this trailer and the state of play was a thousand times better than the mm. nintendo direct trailer this actually told me what the game was about and it looked yeah. fun and it looked interesting but the thing is i think i would get this play it for five minutes and never touch it again that's the problem isn't it a lot i miss i'm really missing story and i'm really yeah. missing 
solid single player experiences and sony was always the home for that but Mm -hmm. now with these battle royales these you know ips getting turned into these like versus games it's just kind of taken it away from me and everything's sort of merging into one and it's a bit of like when's something gonna come and just jump out at me you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like don't get me wrong like I reckon if I was to play this with you and like a few friends or whatever, we'd probably all have a massive laugh. But that's it. It wouldn't be something that I will be playing for like a solid week or consistently. I'll play it probably once or twice and be like, you know what? I'm over it now, you know? But yeah. at the same time, I appreciate the fact that it's not just a basic shooter. It's more, yeah. they've, they've changed it up a bit. And like, I remember one of the things that stood out to me, it was like, oh, you know, you can become the ball as like a secret weapon, you know? So when someone throws you at someone else, like I'm assuming you like pop out or whatever. So like, I kind of appreciate that they've gone a bit more in depth with it and that that can open up some really fun opportunities, but off the bat, like, yeah, I not, maybe just not for our age group. Like we've, we've come from like games like Metal Gear Solid and proper like heavy story kind of games. We're not really, into this whole generation of like battle royales at all are we i don't think i think that's like a completely fair way to put it i feel like if if i if i were to speak to some younger maybe some kids around like 11 12 maybe like early teens they would probably be really up for this and i reckon this could take off not in like maybe the 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 growth that fortnite had but for that kind of similar demographic yeah. like young teenagers older mm. children who are like interested in this kind of stuff um i feel like it's a cool concept it just didn't, like you say, it didn't. It just really didn't do it for us. And I think there could be an age thing. I feel like I would play it for a little bit and move on. It kind of feels like Fall Guys in the sense that I really enjoy Fall Guys, but I won't play it all the time. I play it when I see my friends, which obviously at the moment isn't very often. Mm-hmm. But when I see like a group of friends and they're into it, I'm like, oh, let's play Fall Guys for a couple of hours and then we don't touch it again for months. It's like, I think it'll be that similar vibe where like you pick it up and put it down kind of thing. It's not going to be like, oh, quick, I better get back on my dodgeball and my dodge brawl game yeah you know i mean yeah it's not something that i choose to play because it's it's obviously not doing anything too different off like as much as i can tell right now you know yeah but still it, yeah i was gonna say it, it looks like it has microtransactions like before you even start it you just look at you like that's this is gonna cost me lots of money constantly i think that's what it is i think it's yeah. that underlying realization that every time they bring out a game like that you're like yeah this is not gonna you're not gonna get a full experience here you're gonna get a half experience and the rest is in your wallet you know yeah that's exactly it and it looks yeah it's just i think that's what it's gonna be i think it's gonna be another microtransaction style style game and i think it's being made by ea is that correct Mm. well that tells you all you need to know doesn't it (laughs) so Mm -hmm. let's just let's just leave that one there so yeah it looks interesting be interesting to see what happens with it, but not really for us. I would say. Yeah, not not for us. The next one they released was this game called Solar Ash, or in I was like Ultra Void or something. In the new Solar Ash game gameplay is like the footage that was released. Mm-hmm. Um, now this to me again looked quite. It looked kind of cool at the beginning, and the art style I thought was really interesting. It was really vibrant and colourful, but yet dark backgrounds and stuff and you know, really kind of um, vivid gameplay, should we say, and really mm-hmm. fluid gameplay, but it didn't, it just didn't look fun. Like, I it think, looked kind of cool, but not fun. I think this game's more, like, it's more of like a, like a trend or like a style of game. They mm-hmm. made, like, I said this earlier, like, oh, it looks really like Hyper Light Drifter. I've just seen that, like, it's made by the same people. Um, oh, there you go. Dead Cells also has a similar style, even though it's more like pixelated. But this like heavy contrast kind of like shapes and bold color type games are like kind of trending right now, I think. Um, but again, like it's a massive scale focus on fluidity and movement. So I'm assuming it's similar to kind of like Gravity Rush, where that's all kind of all to do with movement and moving things around, which is yeah. cool. Like. I think it's a it's a cool little game like it's not like a showstopper for me but like I appreciate that it's there you know out of all the games that we'd seen so far I'm like weirdly enough like I appreciate more that this is there than like the brawler like the dodgeball yeah. game yeah I agree um, I completely agree so yeah I mean I don't know whether it's something that I would choose to pick up fresh but I I think I would be curious to try it if you know I had like some spare time and like spare money and i fancy something a little bit light-hearted and pretty you know like i'd probably pick this up but 
it's not gonna it wouldn't sell the ps5 for me you know like no so not not at all i feel like it has kind of almost it looked almost like even though it's meant to be kind of like um that there's people to fight and things like there are bad guys in the game essentially you've got to take down it still reminded me of kind of like a quite relaxing game almost like a flower or like a um um oh god what was that game where you're that little person going through all those little different worlds um oh it will come to me it reminds me of that but also the art style reminds me of if you've ever played transistor yes yeah it like really reminds me of that where like everything is essentially quite dark and dull but then like your character and certain things are quite vibrant and like very vivid colors but the very very few of them to really make them pop like it seems i actually really do i mean the more i look at these sort of images like i do love these kind of these kind of games like there's something relaxing about it like you said when you play it because you just you it's just visually very appealing isn't it Mm -hmm. i mean last of us part two visually gorgeous but obviously it's a very dark game and it almost and, and it's realism and everything is quite draining after a while like games have that really good thing of like they're entertainment but you do get a lot more tired playing them compared to like mm-hmm. watching a film or reading a book or whatever like games are kind of meet you halfway aren't they whereas yeah. with this it's like but this sort of game again i feel like i would be more i'm more inclined to play this sort of game on the switch than i am on a ps5 I don't know. It feels like more of a handheld game. It not does a, feel like a portable game. Yeah, definitely. Not a sit down, get your snacks and get lost at your PS5. It's a, I'm going to play this in bed on my Switch type game, you know? I feel like this is a game that could eventually come to like being an app. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. being available on like iPad and iPhone and what have you. And like, Which is the seems... future, I guess, isn't it? So It is, but this game actually seems like a portable game. Like you're right. It seems like it should be played on a handheld. It doesn't feel like it should be played on a like mainstream console. Mm-hmm. It feels like it should have come out handheld first and then be like, hey, guess what? We're coming to console and it's going to add some more features or whatever. But these are all just first impressions. Like we haven't actually played this because obviously it's not out yet. But um, that's just what it gives us. But it does look cool. And I think possibly when it comes out, I will be maybe getting it and just seeing what it has to offer. So overall for Solar Ash, I would say it's, yeah, it's positive. Like it's definitely one of the highlights of the the show. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, not like this next one. So the next thing they talked about was um, Five Nights at Freddy's, which I thought was dead and gone. I'm really shocked that it's coming back. And I'm really shocked that it's coming back on the PlayStation. Like, I thought it would have receded back into the app world. But, I mean, look, Scott Cawthorn and everyone, and like his whole team that make this game, like, I know they've got a whole storyline that they've been working on. And they've got a diehard fan base. And I know that YouTube channels like Game Theory and stuff like make loads of videos about it and like really look into the story and like how it could relate to the real world and how it's based on real things. And I do completely get that. And I do find the that element of it really interesting. But I feel like the concept is kind of tired now. Like you're literally hiding around this restaurant, avoiding these um, animatronics and checking cameras and stuff. I don't know. It's, to, to me, it just seems like there'll have to be something really new and really unique about this particular game to keep this franchise going any further. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, okay. So I've never personally played five nights at Freddy's, but I have heard like a lot of it and I've seen like a lot of YouTubers play it because it's, it's like quite a scary game makes people jump Mm, quite a fun game for people to stream. Um, really simple concept of, yeah, like not getting spotted, I think. And, trying to find people and stop alarms and stuff in, in CCTV and stuff like that. Like, I, that's kind of what I've seen. And this seems like it's more immersive than those. So you're actually, like, in the building with them rather than yeah. looking, like, at a control room. So they've kind of, like, yeah, they have kind of upgraded it a little bit. But um, I think, obviously, the, the whole concept's the same. You are, like, avoiding these things. But I guess it's it's nice that they've sort of... I mean, it looks pretty good, like... Yeah, it did look really good. Really colourful. And, like, the trailer mm. was pretty good as well. Like, I enjoyed the trailer of it when I th- first saw it in the first state of play um, when the con- when the when before the 5 came out. So I was like, actually, no, this looks cool. But, I mean, I personally wouldn't buy it, but I know it's got a huge fan base. I think they've kind of made, like, the right choice by making it more of, like, a first-person experience. But, yeah, I don't know. I've I've only kind of recently picked up, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, like, how how popular it kind of is amongst the community so i'm still new to it to be fair but yeah 
it's been going for quite a while. Like it, I remember when it very first came out on the iPad and like a lot of kids were talking about it and it was very much like a horror game, but very much aimed at, at children, let's be real. And then it, and then it kind of grew into like an older fan base, but yeah, the, the, the trailer looked quite good. It looked very colorful. It looked like a really well-made game and it seemed they have improved some things. So like you said, you could see that you were actively running from the animatronics it wasn't just that like oh it's been released you've lost the game it seems mm-hmm. a bit more like you are playing as someone who's literally trying to survive the night which could be really fun and could be a really interesting concept but i just Again, don't know for me if it's not something that that I, bit. yeah not something i would probably spend any money on you know yeah that's if it. it was a free game i'd pick it up and i'd play it and that's no like that's no negativity towards the developers and the game as a whole that's just personally like i'm quite fussy with where i spend my money on games now and that Mm -hmm. to me doesn't make me think like i have to buy this you know yeah and there's like there's so many five nights of freddy's games there's so many there's so many there is a lot yeah there's there's ios games there's web app Mm. games there's playstation games there's xbox games i'm sure like they're all over the shop and there's like so many on steam and it's like it's just a lot um so yeah not too bad Mm. um the next thing was Okay, this may be quite excited. This was the Oddworld game. So Abe is like coming back. So this one's called Soulstorm, Oddworld Soulstorm. And this is, I mean, I'm sure we spoke, I'm sure we spoke about this before. You played Oddworld on the PS1, right? Yeah. Abe's Oddworld on the PS1 was one of my favorite games. I could never do it because I was only like a child, but I could never get certain far, at certain points. Blah, 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 I'm start again. I could never <laughs> get past a certain point, but it was such an interesting game. And I used to love the little cutscene at the beginning when he started talking, like, walking around like cleaning up being like um i'm i'm cleaning up his little place here they want to eat me what yeah. am i gonna do and like he'd run away and the little <laughs> the little like <laughs> it's Madugan. so cute but it's also like so disgusting at the same time it is and i think that's kind of yeah what what i love about it and like there is like a lot of nostalgia with abe and everything so mm-hmm. and do you know what like they've kept it kind of really uh, reminiscent of like the older games i think but it also looks like really great as well so proper happy that he's kind of finding his way properly into like yeah the new generations you know i am too because they had they recently like i say recently a few years ago they remade the original um game on onto the ps4 and that was really good it was nice to see it would literally was it was quite a faithful remake it was actually brought into the future like it looks it played the same way and everything it was really really cool um, and then it was a bit like hit and miss because Odd would have released some other games where I think his name is, um, is it Lawrence Lanning or something? Mm. His name is the guy who develops them. He has made a few Oddworld games that don't focus around Abe and I don't know if they've been as successful, but, um, I'm glad to see that Abe is actually back and it looked really fun to play. I actually thought to myself, Joe, you know what? I think I might pick this up. Like I did seem interested. So yeah, positive yeah. one for Oddworld Soulstorm. And, um, that one is available on the PS4 and the PS5. Just like, I feel like um, so, so, Solar Ash is the four and five and so is Crash and so is um, yeah, so, Snap and stuff. <laughs> which is leading us to an interesting point. But so far, every game <laughs> is available on both both four and five. Yeah. Up to Oddworld. Up to Oddworld. We'll, um, we'll get there for the next bit, I yeah. think. We're almost there. We so the next thing there. they talked about, which you were really excited for, was, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, is it Kina or Kenna? I think it's Kina. I, I do the same thing, but I think it's Kina. I hope it's Kina. Kina. I'm so okay, excited so for this. Like Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Kina, called. Bridge of Spirits. Um, this looks, looks like a Pixar film. Exactly. It looks like a Pixar film, like a, or like a Disney. It, at the end of the day, it looks like some kind of really well done kind of happy film you know that you Mm -hmm. would see on like disney plus or whatever yeah and um i just love the art style of it i think the the little creatures i can't remember what they're called i think they're called rots or something they Mm -hmm. are the most adorable little creatures with their big eyes and straight away i'm like this game is going to be charming as fuck you know like it's not it's all about the environment and like the story and the world and i'm just so here for it it's like finally something that i'm probably gonna play or i am gonna play but i'm gonna feel really kind of like just nice playing it and i'm gonna enjoy mm-hmm. it and i'm gonna take it all in like visually and the story um and I'm, i just can't wait to like dive into it it just looks so just so happy and it was just such like a nice change of pace from you know your fortnights and all that stuff like yeah and I've never seen a game 
I mean, I'm probably totally wrong, and there probably is a, a game like it, but in recent times, anyways, I've not seen a game that looks like a playable Disney film. Like, I'm just so excited. I can't believe it looks like this. I've never seen anything that looks like this that isn't, like you say, a feature length film. Like, I this could just be cutscene footage, but if the game is, if the playable part of the game is anything like this, even if it's similar, that's crazy. Like, this looks fantastic. Yeah, and... so endearing. And even the main character, like, she looks just awesome. Like, mm-hmm. you know. I just, yeah, I just cannot wait. I just think it's going to be really charming, really fun, suitable for pretty much all ages. Like, something you can just sit down and thoroughly enjoy. And, yeah, this was obviously the highlight. Like, I, when I like something, I will go on about it for ages, as everyone that's probably noticed. (laughs) So, clearly you like this one, then. (laughs) I cannot wait. It's a game I'm going to pre-order. So, 100%, like, yeah, excited It does. It It, it seems like, as well, these, like, rot things, it seems that you kind of capture them and almost have them follow you on your journey and help you which reminds me of i don't know if you ever played a game on the ps1 it was called jade cocoon no i didn't play that but why do i i feel like i know it like it's basically almost like uh i guess you could say like a pokemon style game it was very weird like it was one of these games that i picked up out of nowhere like you know when you go out with you used to go with with, with mum and dad and you go to like game station or whatever and there'd be some games in the bargain bin and you'd be like oh please let me get a game like anything and you grab anything just anything anything because (laughs) literally anything like Lago Winch or like VIP the Pamela Anderson game like (laughs) (laughs) let's just shoot Larry or something your parents like yeah fine fuck off have it and you're like (gasps) they're like just just take it and shut up it's like I put up this game called Jacob Coon and it's very much like your character actually looked very similar. Similar, I was going to say Kina and similar. It looks very similar to this character in Kina. And you would go and encounter these kind of creatures in the forest, a little bit like she's doing, but you would end up taking them with you or capturing them, um, which is quite interesting. So it just reminded me of that. But I think it looks stunning. And it looks almost like a cross between, I don't even know, like a cross between maybe um, Tomb Raider and something else like there's a lot of platforming aspect to it and a lot of like fighting and leveling up and stuff so yeah it just does look really cool and i'm really excited for it so super, super Kena, bridge of spirits yes we is here for you it reminds me a little bit of joe just looking at some of the, the footage um a little bit of trine yeah it's that colorful stylized environment that like kind of it's just great to look at you know like i think it's a yeah. beautiful style um yeah and just the lighting and everything it's just cozy it is very much like trying though like if you if you look at like the trees and the lighting and just the contrast of the colors like i think they've probably taken some kind of like influence from games like trying um which is awesome anyway we need to do we we definitely need to do an episode on trying at some point oh i love trying so much i miss that they're all on the switch as well so that could be that could be how we do it could be how we do oh the excitement so kino bridge of spirits yeah kino bridge of spirits is coming to the ps4 and the ps5 um very soon so very interested to hear about that i think it's available in august i think it's 24th of august so looking forward to that one very 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 excited very the next thing they spoke about which we did see in the state of play when like the ps5 was first being announced and stuff um is a game called death loop death loop's deja vu trailer was really was released um Deathloop, okay, this game, I don't really enjoy first-person shooters at all, especially not, like, Battle Royale first-person shooters like like COD and Fortnite and all that kind of stuff. It's not really my thing. But this does look interesting. There's something about it mm-hmm. that seems really fresh and new. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird because, yeah, it is... I don't think they're doing anything mile, miles different, but, like yeah visually and the music and just the kind of attitude of it seems very fun and different and yeah i'm 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 here for it to be honest like Mm -hmm. out of kind of first person shooters or whatever like i'm definitely here for it um yeah surprisingly because normally i would never really go for games like this but it's very kind of like the style of it's quite unique isn't it really yeah it seems really interesting it seems kind of like old school 1950s kind of unique yeah um, but also a bit I mean, wacky as well yeah yeah like a bit wacky and crazy and about like your characters are kind of changing like morphing mid phase and there's possibly kind of like a rewind moment going on and the story seems quite interesting where it's like 
I don't know. It seems interesting, but it all seems a little bit cheesy. There was a moment that there was a line that really got me that made me just feel like, oh, for God's sake. And it was like, what was it? Every kill is this was it every bullet is the same but the gun it comes from is different or something mm. like that and i was a bit like oh, okay then so yeah it, it could, <laughs> it just it could go one of, yeah. <laughs> my face was like, eh. yeah. it could go one of two ways off the bat it looks brilliant but i hope when you get your hands on it when we get our hands on it it doesn't turn into just like ah, oh, you know this uh, this is too samey you know Hopefully not. If it starts getting skins and stuff, then it's going to be the same thing, isn't it? Well, I it, mean, it just looks like I've a just very... scrolled to the bottom of like, and it says character skin Storm Rider Colt you can get. So there's going to oh, be, an, I done. think there's going to be like an essence of it, but I feel like it's probably more of a standalone game than like I know Fortnite's a standalone game. It's probably a weird way of saying it, but it feels like more of like a a solid experience than like you know, just kind of the look of this game tell. Yeah, the look of this game tells me that it could have a single player campaign and then have this mode on top, which would change it. If it had that, I'd be really interested. But if it's just going to be this multiplayer battle royale situation, mm, then maybe yeah. I'm not so interested. Yeah. But the concept of it does seem really, really like unique and stuff, which I'm really into. But apart from that, it's not really my cup of tea. But hey ho. Hey ho. Um, we'll see what Deathloop does. Hey ho. We'll see what Deathloop does do. And I believe that Deathloop is available on just the PS5. Am I right there? I think so, yeah. I've not seen anything for it for the PS4. Uh, I think it is strictly a PS5 I think game. It's, yeah, just on the PS5. Which is the beginning of what we're going to talk about. And we'll talk about it mainly when we get into this next game. Which I am so, <laughs> so excited for. So the next thing, I was in a stream. I was watching this in a stream and I was saying in the chat, I was like... Um, what are the chances do you think that we'll hear anything about Final Fantasy Remake Part 2? Now, that isn't what we heard about, but we did then, literally minutes after I said that, get a trailer for Final Fantasy 7. And I freaked out because, as anyone would know, that is like one of my most favourite games in the entire world. And the remake was fantastic and I can't wait for the second part. But this was, we found out that the PS4 version was going to be upgraded and it was going to be coming to the ps5 free of charge so if you have the ps4 version you will get the ps5 version automatically upgraded to you fantastic um and you were also going to be getting a dlc and it is all about yuffie or yuffie or people say it differently um yuffie kisaragi which is the one of the most funny characters in the final fantasy 7 franchise I know you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, so it's hard to really compare for you, but it's almost like she's a bit like... she's. I mean, she is a child. She's meant to be about 15 in the game, so it's not as if she's, like, um, an adult character. But she's a bit like... I could compare her to the Isabellas of the world in Dragon Age 2. Right, okay, yeah. She's kind of like a comical rogue who is... uh, Yeah, just very sneaky and very sly... And very much, she's very much a, a, a 90s cartoon brought to life, if you know what I mean. She has that Love kind it. of like really cheeky kind of like, she's a brilliant character. And in the original game, she was an optional character. So you didn't have to meet her, which is why I think they've put her to have this introduction in the DLC. Because I wonder how they'll play it, whether when you go to the part two game, whether you can pick her up on purpose or not. Or whether they'll make her a full-time part member and not be optional. I don't know. But either way, the trailer looked brilliant. Her outfit was on point. It looked exactly like it did in the PS1 version. It was so well made and so like redone really, really well. And she had this little like Moogle thing that was going on top, which looked really cool too. Can I just um, quickly say before, just because you reminded <laughs> me with, with the outfit, this is kind of off topic, but not off topic. Basically, when I saw that outfit, it's very similar to the outfit of um, Princess Garnet in Final Fantasy IX. So she wears this kind of shawl that's sort of like red and white. And when I oh. kind of, because I watched State of Play in the morning, I sort of skipped a little bit past uh, Deathloop up to this. And I just caught a glimpse of that white top and I literally, my jaw almost hit the ground. I was like, they are not remaking Nine. And then I went back and I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know who this girl, who this bitch is, but like, cool. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic. But yeah, I, I had like a minor meltdown then when I thought it was going to be like Final Fantasy Nine, but... Just, I, you just reminded me of it. I was like, oh, I need to say that. <laughs> well, loads of people have called for remakes of other Final Fantasy. And the thing is, Final Fantasy VII is doing so well mm. that, I mean, they are, don't get me wrong, they are milking this cow dry. Like, this this poor game is being, like, milked ridiculously. <laughs> but if this carries on doing well, we could see remakes of, like, 8 and 9 and stuff. Because there's a big call for Final Fantasy VIII as well. People loving yeah. 8 who really want that. Um, but, yeah, Final Fantasy VII looked, this, this, this trailer looks so, so good. And 
I was just I'm very very excited because it seems like they're bringing Yuffie into Midgar for anyone who does li- know the Final Fantasy games and she was never part of the Midgar scenario so and the whole thing from the trailer it seems like she's watching your party from the background she's always like oh they're going over here let's see what we can find out so it brings a bit of realism like she's been following you around this entire time and you get to play her doing that so I thought that was such a cool concept but but yeah so the thing that everyone is upset about though is that obviously Final Fantasy Final Fantasy 7 remake came out on the PS4 mm. um it's a PS4 title PS5 is now getting an upgraded version cool that's fine but this DLC is only going to be available on the PS5 or it, it's not quite a DLC but it's called Intrograde isn't it Intrograde mm. in in Instagrade Integrade Integrade whatever so this is not coming to the PS4 it is only coming to the PS5 on the 10th of June and people are not happy that it's not going to both platforms I what are your thoughts my thoughts are I do I'm gonna say it like I think it is quite bad taste on Sony's behalf mm-hmm. like don't get me wrong like I understand you know like we are like it's it's kind of ruthless when it comes to like next gen consoles like most of the time we should just accept that we've moved on to a new console now and you yeah. know things are going to start falling off but considering the year we've had and the launch that it's had and the fact that its game was on the ps4 it kind of is a bit of a smack in the face for like a lot of people that have only got access to a ps4 and normally i do find that like you do stay on the last gen for like a further like maybe one well one to two years before you really start to see the next gen kind of kick off and i yeah. feel like especially now people can't actually grab a console it's yeah i i I, if if i was as passionate about it as you are like say for example you never got to get the five Mm -hmm. you would be absolutely raging because you love that game and you've played everything and you thoroughly enjoyed the release on the four you get a bit of dlc you think oh yeah like i can continue playing it oh wait no i can't because i can't get a console unless i'm willing to fork out over a grand to some like person online you know yeah. and it's like a bit like i wonder if they thought about that before they did it but then there is the argument well when was this decided this was probably decided before the launch was even a thing and it's yeah. completely harmless you know so just was a bit awkward wasn't it that's the problem like you said there's two camps there's the camps where you got to think of like well at the end of the day we're moving on to new generation and if they make this dlc available on ps4 it would be the last thing available because let's face it the part two game would more than likely be a ps5 exclusive because it won't be coming for a couple of years anyway so whatever so there's that whole camp where it's like kind of just get over it we're moving on to new generation find yourself a ps5 Mm -hmm. which is a valid opinion even though it's a bit harsh it's a valid opinion then you've got the other camp where it's like well hold on a minute like you said if you remove all the emotion and all the, the horrible things that have happened due to, due to COVID, and just think about the gaming world, it has had an impact on the production of the consoles, and also it's impacted people's finances, who then cannot either, either can't get a hold of a PS5 because there was not enough of them, or physically couldn't afford one. So that's a lot of people, that's a lot of mm-hmm. people who were affected in that way, and they are all going to be missing out, and a lot of them, as you can tell from Twitter, are huge Final Fantasy fans and now and have bought the remake and were so excited and now they're being kind of like, it's like a slap in the face of them. And while at the end of the day it is a business and Sony have to move on, and it's not just Sony, the developers of the game are moving on and saying, look, we're not doing anything for PS4. I mean, I think if we, if there's any kind of, sil- not silver lining, but any kind of positive thing we can take from it is if you look at Cyberpunk, they mm. tried to do a huge game cross-platform and it did not work. Yeah. And I think if I was going to be, if I was on the PS4 still, and I was looking to get this new DLC, and I'm thinking, right, they're creating a whole new thing, and the part two of the game that's eventually coming, that would be cross-platform, fantastic, and then I get it, and it fails as badly as Cyberpunk did, that would be it. That would be game over for the Final Fantasy franchise. Like, if they screwed that up as badly as CD Projekt Red did, that would be it. Like, no one would be interested in a part three or a part four, it would probably, you know, really screw with their finances and we probably wouldn't even see a part three and a part four. Us as gamers, like, let's be honest, we have the biggest trust issues out of, like, anyone. <laughs> and if you hurt us, like, we are scarred for life. Like, mm-hmm. unfortunately, CD Projekt Red had... They were, like, the golden boy of the gaming industry. Like, yeah. they had The Witcher, like... 
and that was getting out and everything and they were the first people to put a game like witch on the switch and it was like yes yeah, cd project red and it just goes to show how quickly like the dominoes fall when mm-hmm. you make one mistake you know and like they should have just put their foot down and been like you know this is just an next gen game but they promised it already and yeah they should have just took a bit longer but like you said if yeah it would it would be the end of final fantasy like people would still care and you know probably it probably would take a bit more to maybe break final fantasy because every game they release or every final fantasy game that's come out has actually been beautiful like i mean i'm mm, not a fan of final fantasy 12 in the slightest but <laughs> um i will say like they are visually nice games and even the new ones that have come out are really nice games so it might take a little bit more but yeah if, if you can't if, if it fucked up as bad like it would just be a very bad day, wouldn't it? And it would everyone's so going to get bad. tarnished now. No one wants to be the next CD Projekt Red with any of their content. Exactly. So. And when you think about it, the Final Fantasy VII remake, I mean, I'm just going to Google this to check sure that my dates are correct. But I remember um, the tech demo that was released for the PS3 when they did the Final Fantasy VII. I'm just going to check the date of when this actually was because this was a fucking long time ago. And I remember mm-hmm. seeing that and it wasn't even... That wasn't even a thing. 2005. Wow. Okay, 2005. So it's 15 years ago, 16 years ago nearly, that that was released. And that was just a tech demo. That They had no plans whatsoever to remake 7. And it was because that tech demo was so good, they were like, oh my God, you should remake 7. So people have been wanting it specifically at least since 2005. And it's taken up until, like, it came out last year. It's mm-hmm. taken 15 years for them to actually do it. If they then released a CD Projekt Red mess... Can you imagine the heartbreak? The cyberpunk just been, yeah. is a heartbreak because of what it is, but it's only been a thing for a couple of years. Like it's not as if it's been a long standing franchise. It hasn't franchise. got as much of a base, yeah, at all. Yeah, it used to be a tabletop game, I believe, a bit like Dungeons and Dragons, like C- Cyberpunk. So it's got those fans, but it's not been in pop culture for as long as FF7. It's has. not a childhood like dream, is it? You know, no, like which not to, to as many fair, people anyway. Brings me to two points. My first point is. I'm actually very happy that I can finally play the remake for free. I do think it's a little yeah. bit bad, but it, it was only released a year ago and yet I'm now getting it for free. And also yeah. being, you know, a very fortunate PS5 owner, I'm now getting the DLC. So I've got the whole shebang like for free, you know, like that's pretty good. But like, you know, bye bye. Which I'm also, happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be a little bit like, I can't because people pay full price for that and like i was i really honestly was thinking that game is never going to go down i thought i will no. get it on sale at some point but it's never going to go down and then it was like, oh do you know what i have it for free next month i was like okay well this month sorry march it's an amazing opportunity an amazing offer but it did hurt a little bit because it was only less than a year ago that i actually threw my wallet at, at it and that kind of worries me now <laughs> because i really want kina and i don't think it's going to go down too much in price because it's going to be a ps5 title oh, but a nice ps4 mm. title as well but it has it has kind of given me that like second thought about buying new games if a game like Final Fantasy VII, which I really expected was never going to go down because it's such a popular game, mm-hmm. is now free. Like, do I really want to be buying new games when they come out? Like, everything's at risk now, isn't it? it when you is. think about it, it's like mm, I'm not sure. But um, my other point was, would I like you were saying about there's a lot of call for like different Final Fantasies being remade. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go and say that i don't think i want final fantasy 9 remaking so my my like number nine is your number seven um for me Mm -hmm. and it's like i don't think i want it remaking because i don't know i just i'm so scared it'll ruin it i know there was a lot of things i know the remake's beautiful and amazing but it didn't quite meet the expectations of people and i don't know i just I don't know if it needs it you know like final fantasy 7 let's be honest like not a huge graphics fangirl but it looks like shit because you know it's just polygons like <laughs> that is it but final fantasy 9 like it was a lot it was a better looking game and it, it was do- better looking yeah it doesn't need to be remade because it just still holds up really well it's just a nice little game mm-hmm. you know and i'm like mm. but then what could have the been, thing is you know? <laughs> when it comes to the 7 remake I think that was remade very, very well. There are things that I don't critically like about it, like the fact that they turned it into more of a linear game and then it wasn't open world until the end of the game where you could then go back and do everything. I I don't know why it had to be like that. That does upset me a little bit, but on the whole, 
this game, it's the story element that was so good because the fighting was very basic in Final Fantasy VII on PS One. It's tight, it's turn based, mm. so like it's just it was strategic content which you can now do on the remake too. You can play turn based on the remake, well not turn based, but something very similar. Um, so yeah, it wasn't necessarily the gameplay that was like innovative. It was the crazy story that was innovative and the kind of direction the game took and like that kind of stuff so i feel like that is what people miss uh, there were some people that were upset about things in the remake which is fine it's like resident evil you're going to be upset with something that you've loved so long that's been remade because it's not the same and what have mm. you but no i feel like with final F- with final fantasy i can almost put my rose colored glasses on because i was just so happy that it was finally here that i was willing to accept a few little faults here and there but i'm hoping yeah. that they'll grow with the games so like as the second one comes out the part two of it they'll be able to improve on some of the things that weren't there in the first one i feel like that's the benefit of having it spaced out into god knows how many parts they'll do because they can learn from each previous part and hopefully just keep getting better yeah it was kind of like an experiment anyway because to make a game from that then, big that big yeah. ground up like looks fantastic i mean mm-hmm. taken years to make and you've only made like not even the full game at, at first i was a bit like oh that's kind of put me off but now i think like with cd project red and stuff i just think that's a really good idea because you can really spread that game out and and you know rinse every inch of it as you should for as long as yeah. it needs to be like if it needs to be a full disc for one part of the game so be it you know like we've lived with discs before i think the longest game was something like 12 discs i think i googled once um oh my god I can't remember what it's really? called though it's some weird game so like to me it's like well it's just another kind of version of that but it's just kind of spread out a bit and i think i'd rather have that it should be Mm -hmm. quality over anything else shouldn't it really so yeah exactly and it's also a good thing from a marketing point point of view because they can keep releasing these games and keep making money off the same franchise or the same game essentially by 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 adding new dlcs and by adding now part twos coming up by another cd like they can keep making money for Mm -hmm. it and you know what as long as they keep doing what they're doing and doing it in the right, right right way i'm happy to throw my throw my money at them because they're doing what i want them to do essentially but yeah, um exactly yeah i'm very happy with it i think i'm just so excited for it i'm gutted for the ps4 fans i really am like my heart goes out to them because that's really harsh because it's not as even because you could say like people have been impacted by their finances and they can't buy one that's a fair point but also the people that have the money and physically just cannot buy one because there isn't one there. I mean, we were talking about the other day, even like President Biden is now looking into the why there's a, a yeah. national like global chip shortage and stuff. Like, it's obviously a big thing and it's affecting more than just PlayStation. But It's um, affecting it. I mean, when you think about how big gaming is, it obviously plays into a lot of like the economy and mm-hmm. people buying things, you know, and when that's kind of stopped because there's like a shortage and then there's people that are just fucking with the system and like creating bots and stuff to buy consoles before anyone even has a chance like it's gonna mess up something and then it's gonna become like a bit of an issue because it's like well you know i mean a lot of people would stop weren't weren't willing to pay prices so that's a lot of stock that's just kind of sat there and it's all just messing up like everything isn't it so it is kind of i guess like maybe it's like more of a crisis really when you think about it like i i think it's good that he's looking into it because that it is an issue, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah. And also this whole, like, scal- the scalper thing. I mean, at the end of the day, I just think it's... A lot of people are saying Sony should do something about it, and I completely agree they should, but there's what can they do? There's only what so can much they, they can realistically do. It's not fair to just put all the onus on Sony because at the end of the day, it's a product they're selling. They are selling a product. If someone buys it all up... I know there should be restrictions on the website and stuff, but people have clearly shown through you know for years there's ways around that and there's not oh, yeah. as if that's the be and end all so it's a bit like you know it's just people's attitudes need to change really and these scalpers need to need to fuck off but yeah anyhow. just like stop stop like, just stopping a dick <laughs> just stop i mean but it's not even just the scalpers cex like are selling them or buying them for like 600 pound and selling them for like 700 pound or something like they're getting they're in on ridiculous. the action ridiculous do you remember when and, you traded in your PS2 or something and you gave them 30 games at PS2 and they were like, okay, we'll give you 10p for all of that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Now they're like on the bandwagon with it. It's just a bit, it's a bit fucking and, ridiculous. Like, And did you know that they're actually sex? It's not oh, CEX, it's sex. That makes sex me feel really uncomfortable. It makes, th- yeah, well, it's an uncomfortable place to be in. No offence to anyone How about you're like CEX. <laughs> like, you're all great, but... <laughs> It's having just... your five-year-old be like i'm going to sex excuse me <laughs> like uh, where you going I'm back, bitch. <laughs> um, but, um, 
yeah, yeah, so it was a nice way to end the state of play, wasn't it? It was a really good one. I'm, I mean, obviously, it weren't mentioned in the state of play that it was going to be a free game, but I'm so excited to play that finally. Yeah. I mean, I've tried. I've tried. Lord knows, you I've tried, tried. You haven't tried to play Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. I have. I've tried it a few times. I just, I'm struggling with it, and I'm not sure what it is, but I'm just struggling to kind of get into the nitty gritty of it at the moment. But okay. now I feel like. I'm more inclined to play the remake because I don't see have you didn't that. play you didn't play any of the original Resident Evils, but you, I could get you to play the remake. So at least for me, this would be like okay, at least you're playing the remake of it. Like all right, you've ignored the original again, and it breaks my heart. But like okay, I have I did start playing the originals though, and I actually really enjoyed the Resident Evil ones. And I did well. I know I didn't finish them, but it's, I did it's say that. I fully appreciate it. You know, like I ain't got time. I ain't got the time to be playing all your childhood games and all well, their remakes. All right. <laughs> well, okay. I'm playing Last of Us Two. It's taken a very long time because that's a fucking long game. It's but I feel game. like I feel like to prepare, you've got until wait. Okay, you've got until June the tenth until the remake comes to the PS5 for free. But it's next month, isn't it? Oh no, you've got next month. Okay, just play it's the remake. Well. It's March. It's March. I'll play it's the tomorrow. remake, and then I'll probably end up playing on Monday the original because i'll be too curious that was kind of what i did with resi it was like now i've played the remake i really want to know like what the ideas were behind stuff and like how it's changed my curiosity is like leads me on so i'll probably <laughs> i don't know i mean i haven't paid it's going to be free so i'm more inclined to kind of get it and maybe yeah, you play a bit of it and think i want to play the original i don't know man like we'll see we'll see okay. we'll see what happens i'm gonna play the remake though 100 percent Perfect. I'm glad. I'll hold you to that. Um, but yeah, so that was the end of State of Play. And I thought that State of Play on the whole was a bit disappointing. But I was so happy about the few things that we said. Like, I was happy about um, seeing Oddworld come back. A few of the games looked interesting. Um, and then obviously Final Fantasy blew my socks off. And Kina as well. But Final Fantasy was the one for me. It, it could have just been a Final Fantasy release and I'd have been just as happy. <laughs> like, that's yeah. all I needed. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I it definitely what... got better towards the end, didn't it? It did. It did get better towards the end, and that was a very good way to close it. Um, and very quickly, just to mention, is that also Final Fantasy are being milked because not only is this game coming out, but there's like a whole host of other stuff coming out. So there's a battle royale game coming out, of course, based on I think the Final Fantasy Seven characters. I need to do a bit more research into this one, but that's going to be available for app the app store i believe and another thing coming is called um okay so there was a game called final fantasy 7 it was called final fantasy crisis core and it was a story yeah, of i've heard about it yeah i don't i won't say too much because it will impact you but it's a story about a separate protagonist who is involved in final fantasy 7 and it gives you a lot more depth into who this person is so now this game is called evercore ever crisis i can't remember i'll google it but either way there's a separate game coming out for the App Store, which goes, it puts this Crisis Core game into the Final Fantasy VII timeline and you play the entirety of the game. So from beginning of Crisis Core all the way to the end of Final Fantasy VII, which is a really interesting thing to do. Um, I don't know if anyone asked for it because it would have been better to maybe just pull all those resources into maybe getting the second part out a bit quicker. But anyway, um, I will be getting it because I have Is this Final only Fantasy. available on App Store? I believe it's only an App Store game. I could be wrong, though. It could be something that's coming to Steam and stuff, but it is literally a little app. A little See, app I've character. heard a lot. Like, obviously, I've not played the Sevens. Uh, seven, my well, Final Fantasy Seven. Um, yeah. But, like, Crisis Core, I heard, was very good. I think it was only available, was it on the PSP? PSP. And people mm -hmm. were like, why is this not available anywhere else? And even now, it's, it was yeah, never it was bizarre. the art. It never <laughs> came anywhere else. And I think, well, why is it... I think they should probably port that to like main consoles like if you're remaking the game we've got all of the originals on like why not start mm -hmm. putting these like it's like dirge of siberius and all the other final fantasies like if you're gonna put the main games on you might as well just start throwing them on especially if crisis core is quite integral to seven yeah. story it's like that's a it's weird kind of... choice i know it's we've all got access choice. to to the app stores as well like it's not like we haven't most of us have a smartphone or a mm -hmm. tablet or something but I just never see myself sat playing anything on the App Store. It's never kind of been my thing. I'm always very no. much a console girl. 
Mm. That's the thing. And I feel like app games are more so like, for example, like your Candy Crush is a game you will pick up and then you'll put down for six months and you'll pick up when you're on the train or like you yeah. pick up. It's not, I don't game because I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to do the next level of Candy Crush. You know, I pick it up because I'm like, oh, I've got a 30 minute train journey and I've got no one to talk to. Let me play Candy Crush. Like, you know, that's the kind of thing that I will pick up my phone games for. And Final Fantasy VII is actually on the App Store. You can actually play the entire PS1 game on the app. And I will say, it plays very good for an app. And I have got it. And I've played it I several times. I think you times. can do it with Nine as well. I'm not sure. I think you can. There's a few of them on there, which I think was such a good game, to, to a good thing to do. But mm. but yeah. But very excited for that. State of Play was very good. Ooh, um, I didn't know about that. Yeah. I think maybe you should get that. But you'll be playing the remake tomorrow. So it's fine. Or today, because you'll be <laughs> listening on Monday. Um <laughs> But yeah, a bit before I think the games the... come out on Tuesdays. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. We'll oh, so you've got a whole other day. Well, there you go I've got then. A whole you've, got, to get ready. you've got all the rest of today. You've got all of Monday. Get yourself ready. Um, before we kind of like finished off though, there was a few more things that happened. So just for, to mention very briefly, because we're such mega fans of, of these two series. Well, I am of one of them. You are of the other as well. Um, so yesterday and today and all week really it's been pokemon week and yesterday was pokemon mm. day saturday and um today is still kind of a stretch of that um and there was a pokemon showcase and they released some really interesting stuff did you watch the pokemon showcase i did not i'm sorry oh, wow <laughs> i know but it's not your thing is it so that's probably why it's but... not my thing anymore and like i feel like a bad person it almost feels like as a gamer you should you should be like you know team pokemon 24 7 but i just yeah fell off the bandwagon with it and it's never quite pulled me back in which is a shame because you say i think of pokemon i think oh I, I just love to play pokemon but then i play it and it just i don't know it doesn't quite do it for me anymore and it's really sad. it's very much a nostalgia thing pokemon i think mm -hmm. and this this i mean it was interesting what they released it didn't mean too much to me because it was basically they're remaking for the switch diamond uh, sorry yeah pokemon diamond and pokemon pearl called pokemon brilliant diamond and pokemon shiny pearl which i thought was really cool idea to do i never really played diamond and pearl because i do just kind of i'm a first generation guy like i kind of love the original i preferred like the old school ones and i think that's why yeah. i struggle so much like give give me like the old games like emulated i'd be on it i'd enjoy it because yeah. it's like that's what i enjoy and that's what i remember like it was good times back then now it's, it's good like times. Mm. It was a good time, wasn't it? Like being that age with Pokemon. When Pokemon blew up, it was a good time. We all had our cards. Mm -hmm. Like it was great. Um, That's yeah, it. Give me that. If I feel like can. all like, the initial releases of Pokemon have been a good time. Do you remember when Pokemon Go came out mm -hmm. and that was all Kanto Pokemon too, the first generation, and life was so good for that. Everyone was like, it was it was the best. Like it was hot. The weather was good. It was yeah, summer. summer. Pokemon was Go was out. out. People were losing weight playing Pokemon Go. It was all happening. It was all <laughs> happening. Exactly. I remember I was walking around this park and this car just drove up to like me and Shana yeah. and was like, "What's <laughs> over there?" And we were like, "There's just Squirtles." And they were like, "Okay." <laughs> and like. It, it, but it was you just knew what people were doing and then you'd see yeah. like 50 people around like a tiny bench and then you'd be like oh that's a that's a hot spot for like whatever it was used to get i can't remember i've not played it this, in ages um, i will tell you something really crazy so the civic center near where i live i live in london the civic center near where i am you will know exactly where i'm talking about yeah. um that had three pokey stops on it that's and it. there was at least 70 people there every single night to the point where the police were called multiple times because there was just too many people. They weren't doing anything <laughs> wrong. There was no fights. There was no drugs. It was nothing. Everyone's it was too just busy leveling up. Was, literally, there was just so many people. Cars parked everywhere. And I remember we, me and a few friends used to go there and walk past. Like, oh my god, there's like 75 million people here. What is happening? Yeah. And it was just the funniest time. Like, every, no one was there to cause any trouble. It was just because everyone was catching Pokemon and battling and raiding. And I thought, this is what <laughs> the world needs. Like, <laughs> this is Pokemon this is, is here it, to though. save the world. This is it. Like, gaming is so important, and I'm not surprised that you know, the president's looking into things. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just goes to show how much of an impact it can have. And it when really did. health and well-being and everything. Health and well-being, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, you normally would associate gaming with, like, you know, not being healthy and all this stuff. But it was like, well, yeah. no, it challenged that. And people were out. People were talking. Like, it was a really, really good good experience. So, mm -hmm. yeah, loved that Definitely. time. What a good time. Loved that time. So, but yeah, the Pokemon showcase did happen. And they released they're going to be remaking Diamond and Pearl, which is you know, fun, good, very interesting. It looked very cool. Um, but they're also releasing something called Pokemon Legends and it was called Pokemon Legends Arceus. And it's basically, and I, I, mean, I, I know this sounds really silly saying it because Pokemon is an RPG, all of them are, but it was like an action-based RPG, like but open world completely. Like it seemed, and it seemed to be set in the past, like ancient Pokemon and stuff. It looked really, really interesting. And it was only like 
it's a very short amount of footage you got to see and it was clearly well still in development but it looked really kind of cool it was set in the Sinnoh region which is a, a region that I've never played so it's kind of like the fifth sixth generation like quite further on but um, it still looked really cool and I thought mm, this could be something really fun to take it like going back in time to when Pokemon was a different kind of era and like would you still use Pokeballs and would you do something different would you catch them would you just befriend them like that kind of whole dynamic I quite like that I like the idea of that, like, yeah. if, if it is a time before they became so structured in being, like... like mainstream in their world. Yeah, that would be yeah. quite interesting. Like, I'd be interested to see that. But then they do do a lot of different things that I don't quite agree with and just throw, like, the IP on it. Like, they had the, um... Oh, they had a game came out, I think it was about three years ago, but it was just, like, you just battle. Like, it was just a fighting game where you played as Pokemon and, like, fought oh, each other. Oh, yeah. And like, Pokemon sense. Stadium. Yeah, it makes sense yeah. because it's like, okay, well, they fight anyway. Why not have a fighting game with Pokemon? But at the same time, it was kind of like, oh. And then Sticky. there's Pokemon like, Snap. That's going to be the next thing I was talk about. But what you're saying is a little bit like what they do with Mario. Mario oh, Golf, yeah. Mario Party, Mario that's Racing. It, though, Mario. Though, it's just it? like slapping Mario on everything. But that is, that's it, though. It's, I mean, or and, Mario, and, sorry. Almost Mario. like, oh, Mario. <laughs> Fortnite is kind of almost doing a, a thing where, like, they're bringing Don't, all the IPs in as I, well. Fortnite can... That upset me. Having having Ryu, having Ryu, sorry, hold a fucking semi-automatic. <laughs> I can't know that was not okay for me to witness. There's just some weird stuff going on in the gaming world right now, people. Like, there is Street Fighter and Fortnite, and then seeing like Chung Lee like doing the floss just made me feel oh, physically no. sick. Oh no, it's wrong. It's Show wrong. Some, have some respect. <laughs> have some respect. She's like the grandmother of gaming. Like she's like she's been through enough. She she's doesn't been need there this. since Jay. What are you doing? Since day. And they're bringing Alien now, aren't they? They're bringing um, oh, God. Ripley and the Xenomorph into Sigourney Fortnite. Weaver's going to be yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sigourney. Oh, but Sigourney. Um, yes, the Pokemon Showcase is very cool. The, what you just said, Pokemon Snap is getting a remake, which does look very cool. I never played the original Pokemon Snap. I don't think I'll be getting this one either. I, I'm Pokemon obsessed, as you know, but like I don't... It's just not. It's too. It's too leisurely for me, and that's not what I'm looking for in a game. So it's just not my taste. But it does look like a really good, well done remake. Mm. Um, and it's very, very cool. Pokemon Snap. So yeah, they really they they announced like quite a few things. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed out. So they've talked about the Pokemon Snap, the D- Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl, Pokemon Legends, and there may have been a few other things but i can't quite remember but either way it was a good showcase mm. and the last thing i want to talk about is also we've had some news from bioware which is very very interesting we have so, we have we have and the things that we were saying earlier on about battle royales and all this microtransactional shit and we just missed single player games well we could be getting our wish come true because it was revealed on twitter that basically due to the failure and i'm going to say that again the failure of a- 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 anthem and the success of DA4 and the success of other story-driven games, EA has decided to give Bioware carte blanche to drop any kind of multiplayer, multi-transactional, whatever, microtransactional elements from the game, and it will be a single-player campaign, like it should always have been, and like they've always been since the beginning of Dragon Age. I bet they were so happy when those ties were, were broken, because mm-hmm. the creative direction would have been like, thank God we can just yeah. do what we know how to fucking do and like no and one well. ever wanted anthem and mm-hmm. it was just so sad to see such like a great like just legends make a game that was just like oh, so not them and it was like fuck's sake yeah. and don't get wrong i'm sure people a lot of people enjoyed anthem but i just was like what are you doing like no one wants it it literally wasn't asked for and that's the problem they seem to make this money and rather than reinvest their money back into a franchise that's just made them all this money they're like i know let's make a battle royale and try and cash in and it's like no like that's what that's what makes people lose faith in you as a developer like ea has i think they've won the award for like the worst company like how many years in a row like come on wake up and sell the coffee like look around you like look what's going on people would despise we should have seen it coming (laughs) literally we should have seen it coming coming. god the Sims, which very is now like sides. for the full game, almost six hundred quid. <laughs> I know it's crazy, and there's another, and they're apparently talking about the Sims Five or whatever, aren't they? And about how that's going to like be a thing mm. soon, but nightmare. Could it be the same game, but so hey, excited. Hey. But no, very Dragon excited. Yeah, so fucking excited for Dragon Age. People, I mean, if you've played it and you know you get it, 
we love it but if you if you don't know seriously look into it dragon age origins is a sick game dragon age 2 is a good game dragon age 3 <laughs> is a great game and hopefully 4 is a mind-blowing game i, mean, I must say I'm though not to be a that developer much of a fan of inquisition i'll be honest like i loved it but like it yeah it weren't it weren't number one for me it was too big without any um like we've we said it before like dragon age one all the side quests tied into the main quest and everything had a purpose whereas dragon age inquisition was a bit of like fetch and carry bullshit oh yeah like, people were oh. just like fill, filler in fetch quests it was like trying to yeah some assassin's creed type shit with like pointless collectibles but hopefully i mean i'll take it if that means we get a solid yeah. single player experience i'll you know? take it but <laughs> Let's hope that's not what it is. But um, yeah. I must say, if I was a developer, I would be. I would have been a little bit annoyed at that news too, because surely that then shifts your whole, like that's you've obviously put work into making it into a multiplayer experience, and now you've been told that's been cut. That's almost like a complete waste of time. And I just hope that yeah. doesn't impact the development cycle, because if they then put a deadline on them, and then they're like, well, we've just wasted a year. Great. Hopefully like, not. And hope. Well, to be honest, hopefully it will free up some resources. Um, from not having to test and try and make all this like stuff that's you know not that would be more difficult to to quality check anyways and and fix you know like so much can go wrong so it will probably it will still put them behind but it definitely isn't as much of a bummer i think so yeah i'm so excited though i'm very excited but um, I think that's all the news we have. So that's the state of play. Yeah. That's the Nintendo Direct. That's the Pokemon Showcase. That's the Resident Evil Showcase. And that's the Dragon Age 4 news. God, what a busy one. I know. I feel like thinking... I've never known so many showcases and stuff to happen in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I don't remember. I feel like, I mean, I could be wrong, but I generally don't ever remember, yeah, showcases being the kind of main form of like, what's the word? Like news or whatever, gaming news, shall I say? Yeah. It's like only like, recently have they sort of thought, well, we all have, they're all going to have to start doing conferences, you know, like that seems to be mm-hmm. the general consensus, which I'm here for, That's it. but they're always a little bit underwhelming, which is a bit of a shame. It was always like waiting for the E3 and stuff, wasn't it? And EGX and things like that. And now it's Everyone's like just hop on YouTube though, at 12 they? o'clock. Not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't want to be, they, I think they don't want to do that anymore. They Everyone wants to be independent. They don't want to, you know, be all part of the big showcase. They want to just do their own mm. thing now, don't they? So... Which is good, but it's also a shame because I feel like it kills that kind of vibe. But also, I get it, like, COVID and stuff, they can't be doing all these big meetings and gatherings, so it has to be more virtual, so... Mm-hmm. Whatever. But, um, I think we've come way to the end of our time. We've gone over... I don't even know how long this is, but it's going to be a long one. It's a but long I one. Everyone, I hope everyone enjoyed listening to our breakdown <laughs> of every showcase that's been happening the past month. Exactly. But, um, and, um... Yeah, let us know what you think via Twitter... Yeah, um, so YouTube, Instagram. What else do we have? Instagram. <laughs> Only fans. No, I'm not Only joking. <laughs> <coming soon. laughs> um, but, so yeah, we do have social media to contact us. Like you said, at Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is TG Breakdown, and uh, Instagram is at TG Breakdown Podcast. Mm-hmm. We are now on the YouTube's, and we're almost up to date with all of our previous podcasts up there in video form. Some with gameplay footage, some with other interesting things and discussion points. Mm. So that is The Game Breakdown on YouTube. And do we have anything else? I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's... that's oh, spiel. well, we have Twitch. Oh, we have Twitch. We do have Twitch. Um, th- but I think... I don't know if we mentioned this in a previous podcast. It's not necessarily going to be consistently every week. We are yeah. going to be playing sort of set games, um, you know probably decided i think we we decided recently that we were going to do like a resi one because um yeah a lovely viewer wanted to watch us uh, go through the resis the originals and i said well anthony can probably play all three of them in one day so we'll go with that <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah like we're, we're planning on doing that probably every other week maybe something like that but that's been really fun um yeah it has been fun it's been nice mm. talking to people too that's yeah definitely really so we, we are the game breakdown on twitch um mm-hmm. i don't know why i said that yeah, give us a little follow <laughs> yes yeah, so give us a follow and we'll see what comes next but yeah we're, we're playing through croc on the ps1 and we've almost finished it and then um we might just like either move on or just very quickly finish it and then jump onto the resi hype train and um yeah we're very excited because but yeah evil it won't be like and i'm so excited huh? i'm so excited for resident evil 8 in may 
oh yes and i think that would be quite good to like do a little lead up and then mm-hmm. stream that when that comes out that would be a good little uh i'm excited to stream that one we'll so have to excited. work out the logistics of that one but that would be fun to do <laughs> um in 70 something days so yeah do grab us on twitter on instagram and now on twitch and um we shall see you on one of those platforms or we'll see you next week on the next podcast so thanks for listening and Bye. see you later